Yes, sir. Marina's win last night. Big one. All right. First question is, is it beanie season or hoodie season? Because this hair, this hair ain't going to be like this. Maybe it's beanie season. Maybe we'll just do this. Is it too early to be doing this? I feel like it's way too early to be wearing a beanie. Yeah. What's wrong with the hoodie? The hair's getting too long. It's hard to manage. I just don't feel like paying for a haircut right now because I don't really have the money to do so. So I'm putting the beanie away. I wanted to give it a shot. And to tell you the truth, I'm going to stick with right now just a hoodie. I'm just going to hide my face. We'll just do this. We'll hide my hair, not my face. There we go. That's good enough, right? I already see them. I just like, look, look my, my hair is a freaking mess. Like, I can't, I can't make a video like this. I look ridiculous. And I don't feel like running the comb through it. This is what happens when you take morning showers and then hang outside in cold, humid air. Your hair just cold, humid air. Your hair then just poofs. Um, let's talk about the game last night because there's a lot I want to talk about. Um, first things first, in my opinion, I don't think the Rangers had any business winning the game last night. I don't think we did. Now, with that being said, Igor Shostarkin was unbelievable and stole us that freaking game. Like, that entire win is thanks to Igor. Nobody else. He was unfreaking believable last night. He seriously he stole us that game. I don't know if there's any other way to put it than he stole us the freaking game. Um, team stats, they outshot us 41 to 23. Jesus. They out, <laughs> out did us in faceoff dot 76% to 24%. I did not think the faceoffs were going to get worse, but they did. They, uh, we out hit them, uh, we out blocked them, we had more giveaways on them than them. So the hit stat is cool, the Rangers are hitting a lot, but there's give and take to the hit stat because some, uh, not sometimes, most of the time if you're out hitting your opponent, you probably don't have the puck as much as they do. So it's it's a kind of a weird stat. Now granted, the hits do count if there's one-on-one -on -one puck battles in the corner. But a lot of the times hits are when the other team's controlling the puck and you need to knock them off of it. So hitting could be an indicator of lack of puck possession, which I think last night was definitely the case. Um, let's talk about players as individuals real quick because I do have a lot to say. Uh, Panera looked last night like he wanted it a little bit more. Um, I'm not saying he didn't look out of it. Like he, I, I'm not saying he didn't look like he didn't care in the first three games, but he looked like he cared more in the fourth in the fourth game against Toronto last night. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not, you know, shitting on him. I'm just saying I thought he played a lot better last night than he did the first three games. Laffy had a pretty solid game. Laffy does look a bit slow sometimes. Like he has games where his skating is just like he's just like brutally slow, and I cannot figure out why. He's got to go in that cockle regime to get his speed going. Especially against teams like Toronto that are pretty damn quick. Kegger had an awful game last night. Bad in the faceoff dot. Bad defensively, bad offensively. I think that was it. I think that last night's game was McKegg's last game for a while. Because he was brutal last night. Absolutely brutal. Uh, Godier had a decent game, but like you didn't really get to see very much of him. Uh, Campbell made a great play with his stick, stopping Godier on a mini break. Um, it just sucks to see. Rooney had a just brutal game last night too. Twenty-seven percent in the face-off dot w was just useless all over the ice. Was, like he did good on the penalty kill. I mean, he he is a solid penalty killer, but he's really not very effective past that. I don't know. I just I can't sit here and remember one good thing Rooney did last night aside from good penalty killing because he wasn't winning face-offs. He wasn't forechecking great. He was back checking okay, but it's like. I don't know. I thought Kreider had another really good game. I, again, I cannot believe how well Kreider's played at the start of the season. It's actually making me hold out hope that this is going to be a consistent thing and not a one-off thing for him. Like, he goes on those weird streaks. Um, but I, I was very happy with the way Kreider played last night, and I've been very happy with the way he's been playing. His shot is on point. His wrist shot, his snap shot is so friggin' hard. If he could be a little bit more accurate with it, that would be great. But at the very least, I think, what, I think one thing Kreider could do more is instead of like when he skates to the outside, he's got guys crashing in the middle, but there's no way he can make a pass for him. Instead of shooting the puck at the goalie's shoulders and chest, why don't you aim for the low pad and like see if you can get a rebound out? Like Kreider could be an assist, like you know, an assist machine if he was shooting for rebounds because his shot is so damn hard. A lot of goalies struggle, like knocking it down. So I figured like if you bank it off that little leg pad, you force out a rebound. And, you know, we could get something going here. But no, Kreider had a good game otherwise. Goudreau actually, I don't think had a very good game last night. <sighs> 
14% the faceoff dot, 17 minutes of ice time somehow, and really just, I don't know. I'm really, I'm trying to stay on Goudreau. I'm trying to be on the side uh, of Goudreau that like likes the guy, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to dislike him a little bit. Now, the season's young, but the first four games have not really been very, very impressive in my opinion. He's hitting a lot. You know, his four checking is pretty good, but he's not like, I don't know. I feel like he was a little bit more effective in Tampa Bay. I feel like, I don't want to make accusations, but I feel like he played a little harder in Tampa Bay. Like he played, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Allow me to reiterate. I feel like his defined role in Tampa Bay he was better at than his role, whatever it is here in with the Rangers. Because right now, I'm sitting here telling you, it looks like the Rangers are trying to mold him into yes, what Jesper Faust was. And it's not working out. Goudreau is a great fourth liner and a solid third liner. He is nothing more than that. And if we keep putting him in situations where we want him to be like that, we're going to continue to be disappointed. I don't think Goudreau's played bad, but I don't think he's played very good. I think his effective role is in the bottom six, forechecking, just eating minutes, forechecking hard, and getting off the ice. Why he finds his way into a top six role sometimes is so beyond me. I think that's poor coaching and poor line line assessment on Gallant's part. And I just think that Goudreau should stay in the bottom six because clearly, clearly, his few auditions with Artemi Panarin on his line have been nothing short short of just ridiculous. Like it's just it's not it's not good. Just keep him off that line because it ain't working. It didn't work the first time, second time, or third time. Why would you try it a fourth time? Especially against a team that is way faster than you. I digress. Dryden Hunt had a solid game. Um, again, I don't know why Dryden Hunt's getting power play time. I, it really, it blows my mind. Like, I know I just trashed the guy. I would rather see Goudreau than Hunt on the power play. At least Goudreau, who hard check, who four checks almost as hard as Hunt, wins puck battles along the boards more often than Hunt. And in Hunt's case, case it's not for a lack of effort. It's just that the players he's going into the corner with are a little bit better than he is with this with the puck. Um, now with that, I really enjoy Dryden Hunt. I enjoy watching him, and I think he should remain in the lineup because he's proven very effective on that fourth line, and I enjoy him there. Especially if he's only logging like that ten minutes a night. I think that's perfect for Hunt. I think he's played fine. Heedle, get him off the second line. There is no chemistry between him and Panarin. You're not going to force it to happen. It, like, all right. So this is this is how I look at it, right? So if you're if Philip Heedle is on a line, he either needs to be on a line with alike players, which is super speed, super skill, just like that, and you just got to go from there. Or he's got to be the center of attention on the line where he's the guy that's controlling the puck on that line. First things first, he is not controlling the puck on a Panarin line. Panarin is controlling the puck on that line. Number one, number two. That is not Panarin's style. Panarin's style is not super speed, super crazy hand movements. No. Panarin's style is meticulously skating the puck up ice, finding sneaky lanes to thread tape to tape passes, or taking quick shots that no one's expecting. His, his style and Heedle's style are, they're not polar opposites, but they're not very synergetic either. I, I don't really think they go hand in hand well. So maybe let's stop putting them on the same line because it ain't going to work. Um... With that being said, we did get to see a very quick Sammy Blay audition on the Panarin line, and I think that would work out. I, I like the way Blay looked on the line with Panarin because he did exactly what I thought he would. He'd just work down low, get the puck out of the corner, and, and put it on the stick of the guys who need the puck, i.e. Artem and Panarin. Also, we saw Panarin with Zibanejad and Kreider last night at one point, and I actually thought it was a pretty good line. So... We could see Lafreniere get demoted a line, but I don't know. I feel like Lafreniere and Panarin kind of fall into that same realm where they're not they're they're not going to blow you away with their speed, but they can beat you to the outside if they get you with a move. And they also move the puck very well, tip to tape, and they can both shoot and their opposite handedness that play on their one timer side, or, or that could play on their one timer side. So I wouldn't be opposed to giving Lafreniere a shot on um on one of Panarin's wings. I don't think it would be a I don't think it'd be a bad idea. I think it'd be worth a shot. 
Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Ryan Reeves had a good game last night. Four hits. Couldn't really ask for much more. No giveaways. No dumb penalties. Just had a strong night last night. Revo had a good game. Sammy Blay, I think should be getting more ice time, but 14 minutes is better than 12. So I thought Blay had a good game last night. Couple shots, couple hits, takeaway, played good. I enjoy watching Sammy Blay. I wish he would get more ice time, and I think he should, but he probably won't. Um, did I did I completely skip over Julian Gauthier? I think I did. Oh, no, I didn't. I talked about Gauthier. Zabadja had an awesome game last night. Picked up two points, point per game, five points in four games so far this season. You'll love to see it. He's playing well, but faceoffs were an issue last night. Somehow, at 29%, he was the Rangers' best faceoff taker last night. That is embarrassing. Uh, 22 minutes he logged. Um... Power play, penalty kill. I mean, Zaban Jets, jack of all trades, and the master of some. Not even the master of none, the master of actually some. So, I, I'm fine with the way Zaban Jets played last night. I thought he played very well. Um, it's not really much it's not much more you could ask for the guy. I mean, ask from the guy. It's like, we have no help right now with Strom out. Like, Strom being out really, it, it really showed how poorly, poorly depth, the Rangers are, I think, is the right word. I don't know. Uh, Truba had such... I don't know. Truba had another one of those games where he would like he would make a couple really good plays. It was like, damn, those are good plays. And then, he'd, and then he had a bunch of moments that were like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I think a lot of Truba's issues come from not being the fleetest of foot. His skating is something that's to be desired. I'm not going to comment further. I thought Truba had a decent game. But... Mm, wish he was a better skater. Um, Nemeth had a decent game last night. I don't think he played bad. I don't think he played great. De Nemeth definitely looked out of place when he was against the Matthews and Marner line. Um, I'm not really seeing it. I don't know. Nemeth's not a disappointment by any means, but he's a little bit less effective than I thought he was going to be. He's playing, he's playing decent, but like, he's not, he's not, I don't know. He's a defensive defenseman, so maybe it's good that we're not noticing him. I take it back. Uh, Fox is Adam Fox. A guy almost played 30 freaking minutes last night and was unbelievable. Here's the problem though. I, and I know I could just be thinking too much about this. I worry that we're going to burn this fucking kid out. Like at, when we get to like the 50, 60 game point, this kid's going to be drained. So we got to find a happy medium for this guy that we're not going to burn him out. He can play 25, 24, 25 minutes a night. And we can actually rely on some of our other defensemen because as of, as of right now, nobody's even close to the level of Adam Fox. Again, I'm saying this for the fourth video in a row. This guy literally seems to have reached another level thought to not be attainable by the standards he set last season. So it is unreal what, what we get to watch from this guy night in and night out. Uh, Lundqvist had a decent game last night. Um, just got to take time to play more games. Uh, I don't think... Um, what's the best word for it? I don't think Toronto's a good matchup for Nils Lundqvist because Toronto's got a lot bigger in the offseason. Um, and... They're still, they're, they're still a pretty quick team. So when you mix that speed and physicality together with the, uh, and I don't want to say undersized because it has a negative connotation to it, but take away the negative connotation to un undersized young defensemen. And it's just, it's a tough matchup for him. Um, but with, with that being said, despite it being a tough matchup, I actually thought Lundqvist had a pretty good game last night. Um, Lindgren had a solid game. Really can't ask for much more than what he does. He just kind of disappears, plays his role and gets out of there. Kendrick Miller did not get a whole lot of ice time last night. Um, actually, it looks like he played less than Nils Lundqvist last night. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I apologize. Sorry for my yawning. Uh, but with that being said, I don't think he had a bad game either. So, we'll see. I don't think Miller played bad. I don't think he played great. He's still a net positive. But, again, I'd rather him be invisible. Like, you know, not be super noticeable, but making solid defensive plays, keeping the puck out of our net and out of our zone than him, you know, making glaring mistakes. Shesterkin, what else can you say about Shesterkin last night? He was undoubtedly 1,000% the number one star of the game, and I really don't think it was very close. Did they? I don't even remember who they named the first star of the game. It should have been, should, yeah. I don't even really think it was very close with how uh, with how well he played. Uh, he faced 41 shots, save 40 of them. Like, that is unfreaking believable how well he played last night. And Jack, and that's kind of taken away from the performance Jack Campbell had last night because Campbell had a pretty good game himself. But uh, Shesterkin was otherworldly last night. It was Honestly, bizarre how well he played. But um, that's all I'm going to say here. I'm actually going to cut this video short because I plan on making a second video today uh, kind of addressing the Rangers' depth right uh, where they're at right now and p potential trades or th th something's got to give kind of deal. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, I, I think right now we, we play again Thursday at 8 o'clock against Nashville. 
we we're gonna have to be patient with this group for the time being because again it, it, we're going into a season again where I'd say about thirty percent of the roster is different than what we finished with so I, there is some adjusting that needs to, that needs to happen. There's a new coach, new systems in place, and uh, and we're missing Kako and Strom. So you're missing your a top six winger and a and your second line center. Like that's a pretty big miss to have. And the fact that we came out of Toronto with two point with one point, let alone two. Um, or two points, let alone one. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the right phrasing would be for that. Um, the fact that we got out of there with any points whatsoever, I think would be the right word, is is amazing. So, a lot to talk about. A lot to sit and ponder. I, I plan on making another video today. I hope I can get to it. But um, if I don't, just know that something's coming with that. Because we got we have to address the depth on this team. But, um, you guys comment all your thoughts on last night's game. Uh, did, I, did I not cover something that you wanted to hear about? Is it something I missed? Or there's something you have to comment on. You guys let me know down below. And I will see you all in the next one. Let's go Rangers. Peace.